Yes, yeah, so today we will be focusing specifically on procrastination. Um, procrastination in itself is one of the great things that kind of affect how the work that we do, how we deliver our work in terms of project delivery, in terms of getting things done. And especially, I think next week we're also going to look at some of the um, principles in project management, for example, Agile, um, or maybe whatever, the kinds of projects that require you to um, produce high value projects. Um, so that means a lot of work that is being put into, yeah, every day to put in a lot of work time just for you to deliver um, high value product. Um, so we have to really emphasize in procrastination and it's, it's, it's normally just a behavioral pattern and it's mostly, um, sorry, yeah, so procrastination is basically just a behavioral pattern and it's normally characterized by you kind of avoiding the tasks that you need to do or kind of delaying the actions. Um, even though you know the worst, you're, you're expecting the worst if this happens, um, you still tend to delay or avoid the task. And it's normally a cognitive behavior. And why we say it's a cognitive behavior is because it involves the thoughts and beliefs and like the mental processes that kind of influence um, an individual's decision to kind of postpone or avoid certain tasks. Um, so one of the major things that we'll see today is how do we um, change the way we think, our thoughts, our beliefs, our mental processes just to kind of um, tackle this procrastination thing. Um, so it one of the things um, with procrastination is it kind of comes from different factors. So it could be coming from you are maybe afraid of failing. So you try to you're trying to perfect something before you deliver something. Um, maybe you lack the motivation. Maybe you're not really motivated to do the certain task. Um, you could be motivated in maybe health department and not um, mechanical so it's kind of the kind of motivation you get to do a certain work there's some works that you would be given that you're really passionate about and you would do them immediately and some tasks you'll just be given but because uh, maybe there's money in it or maybe something you have something that you just have to do you tend to do it but not um, wholeheartedly um, so we're going to look at the different, um, yeah, the different. Sorry. Um. So yeah, we we're going to look at why it's important to. Kind of think about uh, procrastination in a way. So we have the different reasons or things like a uh, decrease in productivity, and it's normally just you tending to delay, um, maybe starting it or just completing a test, um, and that could lead into decreased productivity. And if you're working in an agile environment, that could be very risky for yourself, for the project, and even for your role, or even you working there. And the other thing is kind of that you get to increase the stress and anxiety, which comes from um, when you, we're going to look at the wheel of the procrastination wheel. So it's kind of you tend to procrastinate on a task and then you kind of feel guilty about it. And, um, you, 
when you're procrastinating the task, you feel guilty at the back of your head. You're like, I should be doing this task, but I'm not. But your head is not really telling you, okay, we have to do this. So when the time is almost, when the deadline is almost coming, you tend to panic or you sometimes get anxious and you kind of start to do things in a rush. And that can sometimes, um, yeah. So sometimes it can lead to you delivering a low quality work. So um, once the work you feel you've delivered is not really good, you, come, you tend to come up with more excuses. And for the first time, as humans, I think we can. Um, the first time, it's normal for you to get burdened. Uh, so when you feel like, okay, um, you have been burdened this time, uh, you're still going to say, okay, I'll do this um, maybe two days before the deadline again. And if you're in, inside the mind of a procrastinator, this is kind of the will that goes on in your head most of the time. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so you kind of have, um, we've talked about the poor quality of work, and also if, if you're in a workplace or a work environment and you tend to submit things past, um, past the due date, it can kind of bring a reputation in terms of um, this person is not working, is not um, delivering the tasks well or on time. And that can also sometimes uh, lead you to kind of miss some of the opportunities that would arise. Um, so there are different kind of factors that can lead to procrastination. And the yeah, so we have the first one being um, the fear of failure. So sometimes it's it's normally one of the reasons that can sometimes make you kind of procrastinate something so when when one delays a task because they may be afraid of not meeting their own or others expectations so you're just scared okay and I'm, I'm not sure i'm going to deliver this work well i'm not sure how it's going to be done well so what kind of um, kind of a fear of potential failure can be sort of paralyzing and it can lead to a lack of action and pref and a preference for avoiding um, a task altogether and um, we're going to look at the different ways in which we can combat this since it's a cognitive um, behavior it can be it can be changed or can practice and start practicing how to um, change this in your mind in your thoughts and your beliefs other thing that can lead to procrastination is, um, especially for the perfectionists, they kind of, so perfectionists kind of set a very high standard for themselves or for their work, and which can be a really, um, it can be an obstacle to even starting or even completing the task. So you may procrastinate because you fear your work won't meet your own criteria that you set in your head, or you may spend excessive time, or even just um, you may spend excessive time on minor details that don't even matter instead of focusing on the whole, like the overall progress of the task. Um, so, yeah, that's perfectionism is the other thing. So, the other thing that could kind of lead to procrastination is um, a lack of motivation and this really comes to it comes back to what exactly are you passionate about and that's why sometimes when you're choosing a career or a career path it's always very required that you follow your passion and not the money or the benefits that come with the role that you get and this is because it might be detrimental to you in the long run so there are certain things that you, you feel like you're very passionate about and 
the motivation just comes naturally because it's something that excites you, it makes you happy, you feel kind of well accomplished to do it. Um, but when you kind of lack that motivation, it can be very difficult to even just initiate or process the task and you might just do the bare minimum work that is needed uh, just so you can deliver something. And um, yeah, it could be just from lack of interest in the task or just kind of feel like it's not as significant or just a belief that this task could be very challenging. Um, so the other thing is poor time management skills and that we looked at maybe around the first few weeks. So it's, yeah, if you don't manage your time well, it can kind of lead to this procrastination. So, um, you may underestimate the time required for a task or maybe overcommit yourself to seeing or like how you have to pick tasks that you feel like your reason you can reasonably do and not like overcommit saying, oh, I'll finish this 20 tasks today, which is not reasonably true. Um, maybe it's not reasonably realistic. Um, so, but like lacking that time management skills can sometimes make you not deliver the work and it can sometimes um this it can sometimes just make you feel like you're running behind schedule which can bring your mind a lot of cares and it's honestly i think it's very demotivating and it can also lead to further procrastination um the other thing is kind of the overwhelm and indecision. So when you're faced with like a very complex or an overwhelming task, um, some may struggle to prioritize. Um, yeah, you may become kind of indecisive to end procrastinate and this can be, um, what can I say? So there's that kind of analysis paralysis when you feel like you have, um, you're very overwhelmed with the tasks or decisions that you have to make and you can kind of feel paralyzed with the amount of work that you that needs to be done or something that you're not sure exactly the right course of action to take and that can somehow lead to you delaying the task and um, the other thing is lack of clear goals and direction so um, like we said last week, um, running around or doing your tasks like a headless chicken without a proper plan, without properly managing your tasks. And we also talked about the different tools that you can use, for example, Trello, Notion to just every day when you wake up, you can see your Notion board and see, okay, this is what the tasks I need to do today, or this are my, yeah, these are the things I need to do today. Um, so without setting that or you wake up and you have no you haven't you know you know you have a lot of work to do but you're not exactly sure what kind of work to do. So this kind of um, this lack of clarity can sort of lead to a sense of aimlessness and eventually procrastination. So um, it's understanding this factors that kind of lead to procrastination is one of the first steps that can help you to overcome this procrastination. So number one, we need to recognize what are the reasons or yeah, the underlying reasons that, um, yeah, the underlying reasons for why you're procrastinating. It could be one of these things. It could be something out of this points on the screen. Uh, but the first thing is to understand exactly what's causing that kind of procrastination. And it's something that you can really work on and um, do well. So number one is to just understand the kind, the underlying cause, and that can help you like develop the strategies to maybe address and maybe improve your productivity. Um, just one minute. Uh, 
Okay. So now that we have kind of understood or we've kind of understood what are some of the reasons that may cause us to procrastinate, um, we are going to look at some of the ways we can avoid or overcome procrastination. Sorry, apologies for that. Um, so yeah, there are certain ways that we can. Sorry. Yeah. Now that we've understood the results that can cause procrastination, we can now go ahead and look at the different ways in which we can now try to overcome this procrastination. Um, so, and when, before we get started, I think I would just like to see what overcoming procrastination is a process and you can use different strategies, um, to overcome them. It's not, you can't find one thing that works really well, but, um, yeah, you just need to find your underlying course and look at the different strategies and see which one exactly will work well for you. So the first one is to number one be very realistic and know why. So it's important to like set very realistic goals um, and understand the reasons behind your goals. So by being realistic, you are avoiding um, setting yourself up for failure or feeling kind of demotivated. Um, knowing your why uh, or the purpose or the motivation behind the task can kind of give you a really powerful incentive to start and complete it. So try to understand okay, why is this necessary for me to do? Um, am I doing something from it? If it's something really substantial that can kind of automatically um, make you not procrastinate. And then, yeah, we have the five minute rule, which is a rule that kind of suggests you start to, you start a task um, for just five minutes. Um, often the hardest part of life doing something is getting started. So you could be just walking around, looking at your desk and what type of the things that you need to do. Um, but I think um, if you if you check this, if you check the challenge document, we will go look at to it. Um, we have linked a certain um, document that kind of says or gives examples of some of the ways we procrastinate, but we feel we can't. So someone would choose to organize their whole house or clean or dust or put things together, but in a way you're just avoiding the task that you'd need to do on your laptop. Um, so uh, just finding many other things to keep yourself busy instead of actually doing the work. So the five minute rule kind of suggests that you commit to a short manageable time frame so you're more likely to begin a task once you're already engaged so but, but just the fact of you coming to your laptop and just looking at it just starting um and it's sort of tricking your brain and telling it okay we're just going to do this for five minutes only and then we'll do something else but once you get started you've kind of set the ball um, rolling and it's kind of, you can kind of find the motivation to continue. Um, yeah, that's the five minute rule. And then you can also set up a reward or punishment system. So it's basically if you do something great, you reward yourself. It could be a small trip or a break. 
And on the other hand, if you fail to do something, you can you can give yourself like a small punishment. For example, um, I might say um, maybe you you know I know we all love money, so you can say you can maybe donate some money to charity. Let's just imagine imaginary things I'm thinking of, or maybe say you're going to buy your friend something. Um, that's not really a, a punishment, but you can think of any kind of punishment uh, for that you feel that you feel uh, pain for not doing what you need to do. The other thing is to get organized. Um, so sometimes there's a lot of clutter on your environment or just a uh, disorganized workspace can be a major distraction and contribute to procrastination. So when you organize your maybe physical and even your digital spaces, you can kind of create an environment that supports your productivity and make tasks seem more manageable. Um, I know a lot of you currently have more than 20 tabs open and they've been open since last week. They're thinking, when am I going to do this? Um, so if you just get rid of most of the clutter and just leave whatever is really necessary or what needs to be done. Uh, and you know, like the things that you feel like you need to know, you need to do um, or learn. You can say you want to learn a lot of things, but just get your tabs open, but try to also Think about that prioritization techniques. Like how how urgent is this? Is it like really a priority for this tab to be open? Um, yeah, that's one of the ways to just get disorganized. So if you have like maybe some of you manage, but the number of tabs that you have can sort of um, I don't. It can be a bit of a distraction, or it can make you feel like you have a lot of work to do less time and you're not even sure when you're going to finish all those things. Um, but if you kind of delete all of them, you maybe have like three or four main tabs, you can focus on those four and finish. And once you're done, I can think about the others. Um, the other thing is to ask for help. Don't be afraid to seek for assistance when needed. It could be a colleague, a friend, or a family. Um, you can ask them for advice. Um, if you can, you can hire a professional for a specific task, maybe an app or, or you can kind of delegate responsibilities to someone else. If you feel like you have a workload of work. So if you're in a team, and yeah, and if you feel like you're overloaded and someone else has some free time, it's okay to ask for help or ask them to kind of share the load. Uh, the other thing is to get rid of guilt. Um, guilt and guilt is the, when you kind of blaming yourself for major barriers to, yeah, kind of blaming yourself on things that you haven't done. So instead of doing things, the past procrastination, you can focus on what is now, what you haven't done now, yeah. what's needed in the future, and things like that. And kind of forgive yourself for the past days and use that action to, yeah, use that energy to maybe take action and make progress. Um, the other thing is to be a, become a groupie. So working with others can be very powerful. Um, you tend to get more things done in a team than when you're alone. Um, the other thing is to manage your time effectively. So remember the kind of tools that can help you again with managing your time. And then the other thing is to break the habit. So Procrastination is a habit in a day to day, tomorrow, if you see and continue, the cycle continues until you actually decide that you're breaking this habit. So consistently you can apply these strategies and be mindful of your actions. So you can maybe take some time, not even take some time, just be aware of what you're doing. You'll be like, okay, I'm watching this thing and there's something that needs to be done. So can you like train your mind to kind of 
stop this and go do this thing that's very important. Um, so that's on breaking habits. And so you, you become mindful, you develop new and more productive habits. And so instead of sitting down, binging, you can decide to take a walk, which is something more productive instead of um, something that's good for your brain and good for your work. Um, so yeah, I think the other thing is to find the right, finding the right combination of the strategies of what works for you is key. So you don't really need to use all of them, but just find a strategy that works for you. You know yourself better, you know the reasons or causes that make you procrastinate. Um, and all I can say is it's a process of self-discovery. You get to experiment in a lot of things and understand exactly what motivates you and what kind of drives you to take action. Um, and from that, you still get to learn more about yourself. And, yeah. um, so another thing is um, a cognitive behavioral solution. Um, so, yeah. So, the first thing, so when I said that procrastination is, sorry, when I said that procrastination is, um, it's a cognitive uh, behavior. Um, we mentioned that it involves the thoughts and the beliefs and the mental processes that kind of influence an individual's decision to maybe postpone or avoid certain tasks. And the first thing in changing this procrastinator behavior is to recognize the thoughts that you have and the beliefs that are driving the procrastination. So, sorry, yeah, so our language, specifically the phrases we use, can be a window into like um, our underlying thoughts. So we have some examples here on the screen, um, but they're just like phrases that are often associated with procrastination. And so the first step of the seek is to understand or identify the thoughts or the beliefs that are in your head. So some so the following some of the so yeah according to your psychology there are typical people who would procrastinate are the ones who say things like I should, I probably will or I think I could. So those kind of phrases. So for example, I should um it Yes, it indicates that you have a duty. I should do this. It says, okay, yes, I have a duty to do this, but it kind of lacks a clear plan or intention. So, for example, I should start working on my project um, suggests um, that you have a desire to begin, but it doesn't provide a specific action or timeline. So, if instead you change to say, things like, at this time and hour, I will do this. And yeah, you could say, at this time, I will do this. Um, same as I probably will. It's kind of very uncertain and kinds of like, it lack that commitment. And same as I think I could, or I shouldn't, I hope to, um, or I will start to do this. The other thing, um, other thing here is I have to or, or criticism, I will do this, or especially this one, it's so hard to, that is kind of a very self-restricting behavior or what to have. So something like it's hard to, it kind of reflects, uh, or you believe that the task is too difficult or challenging, which can 
lead to avoidance. Um, yeah, it can lead to you avoiding doing the task. Um, yeah, so those are just some of the examples that you should try to think about in working. So for someone who actually um, doesn't mean to procrastinate, we'll use the following terms. For example, um, I will do this because I want to. I will definitely do this. I am very confident that I will do this. I will start this and this. That's those are the people. It's it's the kind of thoughts or beliefs that. And remember, this is something that takes practice. Um, not just the first time. It takes a lot of practice. So we can change the thoughts and the beliefs in our heads. So once we've identified those thoughts and beliefs that are contributing to uh, the procrastination, um, we can work on the following. Um, so maybe just reframing this, the should statements before with, um, so for example, I should start working on the project instead, try something like, I choose to start working on the project now because it's important to me and maybe it will bring me closer to my goals and things like that. And so that kind of shows the commitment and you are kind of also rewiring brain to kind of understand the things that are very urgent, um, the, the things that actually need to be done. Um, you can also try to commit to specific actions. So um, again, for example, I probably will finish this report by the end of the week with, I will finish my first draft of my report by Friday afternoon. So pay attention to like how your brain takes this thing. So if you if you tell yourself, I'll finish this report by the end of the week, that's like setting a very um a very really bad okay. You're setting a very heavy task on your brain. So um but if you instead tell yourself I will finish my first draft of the report. So draft doesn't draft kind of takes away that perfection is an aspect. So instead of um, the first draft doesn't necessarily mean it has to be really well done, but at least you have made a lot of progress with your first draft. Yes, there may be some, and you'll find that you get, you feel more relieved having that first draft, even some you know, challenges than without even starting. Um, yeah. So yeah, the other thing is just to kind of build confidence. Um, so when you say I'm confident, I can. So it's something, let me just say the previous, the before and after. So maybe like, I think I could learn a new language. You can say I am capable of learning a new language. And I'll start with like 15 minutes that you study every day. Um, that's kind of building the confidence. And again, it goes back to how exactly do you talk to yourself? How do you, how do you expect, how do you talk to your brain? Um, yeah, just things like that. And then also, it also, I think it goes to the kind of community of the action. Um, so instead of saying, I'm going to try to wake up early tomorrow, you can say, I will set my alarm for 6 a.m. and I'll place it somewhere you can hear it. And you have to kind of turn up, um, you have to get up uh, to turn it off. Um, yeah, just things like that. And so yeah, just pay attention to how exactly you you speak to yourself, the things you tell yourselves. Um, uh, yeah, there are certain ways you remember that your whole body and brain system is a very complex system that we all don't understand really well. But with the right kind of setting and programming, we can kind of program it to do better things. Um, yeah, maybe some other just other things that 
we are not here that I could even share is some of the strategies that we can um, try to adapt certain beliefs. Um, yeah, so like we mentioned earlier, like group number one is to exactly find why exactly what motivates you to do certain things and then commit to actually doing it. And when you're actually doing it, instead of feeling like, um, I'm not so sure I can get this done, you have to kind of build that inner confidence and focus on your strength and also remind yourself of the past successes. It can kind of um, remind you yourself of the capabilities that um, you've done how capable you are when you think about the challenges you were in previously and it can help boost your confidence and then also the other thing is to plan with flexibility getting a really good plan and sticking to it um another thing is to visualize what success would look like for you in that situation how will success um look like exactly for you so imagine you're successfully completing a task or achieving the goal, exactly how will it be, how will it feel? And the just even when you're thinking about how your success will be, think about the steps or the positive yeah, the steps that you take and yeah, the steps that you take to get to that success and the positive outcomes. And this can help reinforce your commitment and then um other thing is to break large tasks into smaller more manageable chunks and then the last thing is to surround yourself with support um the people who are close to you the network can really impact how how you how you see certain things how you react to um certain things to so try to seek like-minded individuals or change communities that kind of share the goals so having a good support system can kind of improve your motivation and accountability uh, yeah so like we said early it's just uh yeah it's about just adopting a positive and a proactive mindset, understand exactly the underlying causes, and notice the beliefs, and kind of try to shift your own mindset to a more productive habit. Um, remember, it's a journey. Again, you'll fail many times, but practicing many times, being persistent, and finding the right strategies, you can kind of overcome your procrastination. Um, yeah, that brings us to the end of my rant. I will hand with a quote. So procrastination is a grave in which the opportunity is buried. So remember all those things that you were supposed to apply that you didn't because you procrastinated until the deadline was up. That is also the many opportunities that kind of buried. Yeah, that is the end of um what's the end of that? Let's anyone has a question before we continue? Okay. Um, look at the challenge so this week's career exercise will be something more with, um reflective more reflective so kind of understanding yourself um in as much in as much as you are very you're very bright and you're good at um, doing things or yeah, it's also very important to kind of develop a very great work ethic. And procrastination was one of the things that kind of derails a lot of our professionals. And it's very good to combat with it early. And yeah, so this is going to be our, uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a reflective exercise, so not a lot of mental. I wouldn't require you to uh, think a lot, but it's going to be more reflective.
So just a small background, and then there's an article here that it would be good if you read through it. Um, yeah, this is the article. It's something on procrastination. Um, so everyone says that everyone procrastinates, but not everyone is a procrastinator. It's a really good thing. Um, and this is the example I told you before, like sometimes when you clean your house instead of working on a big project or putting off sorting your closet because it's in the building, you might be a procrastinator. So take some time to go through it. Um, it's linked on the challenge. And then we just have a small exercise. Um, so the exercise will basically just be you watching a TED talk about how it's like inside the mind of a master procrastinator. And then um, kind of the questions here are just you kind of reflecting on the things or um, yeah, reflecting on exactly how you've been. And remember for this exercise, um, it's not something to kind of judge you but kind of um you need to understand yourself better and um kind of reflect on ways you can improve um so don't be afraid to mention the things or tasks that you've procrastinated no one's going to judge you maybe that much from you now so all your own good so you can kind of um grow um, yeah, so that marks the end of our second this week. I'll leave this transfer questions if anyone has any. Do you guys have access to the documents? Have you already shared the link? Um, yeah, here is the link on the chat. Let me also add it to the Uh, please confirm if you have access. So all the documents, the slides, and okay. Yes, yes. we do have access. It's okay. Okay. Thanks, Devin. So if no one has no question, thank you guys for being here. And I hope you have a productive rest of the week. Um,